Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if you are new here and welcome back if you've been before. It's lovely to have you either way. Um, I'm really excited about the video that I'm recording today because um, I will be talking about the Miles Franklin uh, Literary Award, which is a really big um, literary award here in Australia. Uh, I set myself a challenge on a whim uh, that I would like to read all of the long-listed books from the Miles Franklin, and I am tracking that over on the story graph. I will leave the link below if you'd like to join my challenge. Um, so far, it's just me. Not surprised, but it's just me. <laughs> so if you are keen to read these uh, these books, then uh, please come and join me. Uh, but I am recording this video. It's actually the day after the announcement of the winner. Now, yesterday, I avoided looking at the news all day. I also avoided looking at the news today to, because I wanted to be able to react in um, in real time <laughs> to seeing who the winner was. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> this morning I went into work and I'd been talking about the Miles Franklin to one of my friends at work who said, oh, so it was great that it was the one that you, you chose. I, I I now know who the winner is. I do know who it is. It didn't change my ranking of the books or my ratings for the books at all. Um, and I'm really, really pleased that the book that I rated the highest is the winner. I thought it was amazing, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to do today is just talk to you about the shortlisted books and give you my thoughts. I have already spoken about some of these books in um, wrap ups, but I am excited to be able to talk to you about uh, the five um, shortlisted books that I have read um, and uh, tell you my thoughts, give you my ratings on them, and then we'll work towards um, what happened to be the winning book, um, which was also my favourite. Okay, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to put these in my least favourite to my to my uh, most favourite. So that's how we're going to organise it today. Um, I will say that my least favourite, I still gave a rating of 3.5. So this is a, you know, that's not that bad, really, like all things considered. Um, so, you know, I think that tells you something about this kind of little group of books and uh, the quality of the writing that's happening in Australia right now. So let me uh, start with my least favourite. And it was Scary Monsters by Michelle de Kretzer. Uh, I don't have a physical copy of this book. I borrowed it um, on audiobook from my library um, and I listened to it that way. Now, I don't know whether that prejudiced my um, enjoyment of the book because this is a book where you can flip it and choose which it's there's two stories they start at either end of the book as in you flip the book and it's a different different story so you can choose to read the story that was in the past set in the past or the story that's set in the in the near future first um that's your decision as the reader as to which end you start at unfortunately with the audiobook it automatically started um at the story that's set in the past so i don't know whether that influenced in any way my enjoyment of the book um you know obviously also when you listen to an audiobook the performance of of the reader um can be a factor also so um you know just keep that in mind in terms of what i'm talking about with this book um so I didn't get to choose which story to start with, uh, which, I mean, realistically, I felt was kind of a gimmick anyway in terms of what it was, you know, set out to be. So it's sort of supposed to be a disorienting um, experience for you because this book was about the experience of two uh, Australians, but Australians who's uh, who have come from... Um, a lineage of a family from elsewhere. Um, so they are um, migrants to Australia um, and they're sort of talking about uh, the, the migrant experience essentially. Um, so starting with the story in the past, we had um, two people. So one was Lily, which is the story from the past, and the other guy is Lyle, the story from the near future. So I started with Lily's story. Lily's story is, uh, so she's a um, a young Australian woman of uh, Asian descent and she um, goes to Italy to uh, teach English. Um, and so I personally, in terms of 
my preference, I preferred Lily's story. Um, it's set in the 80s uh, and she sort of just talks about um, her experiences there and sort of the things that overshadowed her experience um, of, of doing that, of going, going abroad and um, teaching English and just sort of who she is in the world. And then we move on to Lyle's story. Uh, so Lyle's story is set in the near future. He is in Australia, but in this sort of, I would say it's kind of a somewhat like a slightly dystopian future um, because one, climate change, and two, um, she sort of, uh, the author touches on, um, you know, so this is a future where being from elsewhere is not necessarily seen as a good thing. Um, and there is prejudice against uh, people who come from other places or who's who kind of have a background um, that is not Australian. So the context of this slightly dystopian future where, you know, the temperatures are really, really hot and, um, you know, these people are trying really hard to um, fit in with the culture of Australia to the point of completely like repressing their own cultural backgrounds um, just to be accepted. So it's, you know, it wasn't a pleasant story to read, um, but also the character of Lyle needed to grow a backbone uh, <laughs> for one and also just wasn't a very likeable character. So I just didn't really love that. Other things that I that bothered me a little bit about this book were that um, there were some really random music and pop culture references and that they felt really clumsy within the book to me. Um, it was fine. It was fine overall, but I won't reread it to better understand it. I, I found it hard to see what the the um, the connection was between the, the two stories other than that sort of very broad being of from a migrant background. Um, yeah, so it just didn't quite do it for me. Uh, so that was the one that I liked the least, and I gave that one 3.5 stars. Um, the next book I do have a physical copy of, and it is 100 Days by Alice Pung, uh, or Pung. I'm still not sure how to pronounce that name. I really should have looked it up. Um, so 100 Days, uh, and this is a book that is about um, a teenage uh, mother or expecting mother um, and she her mother her mother is um, from the Philippines of Chinese descent and she is sort of this very stereotypical Asian tiger mum very protective and um, you know setting a lot of rules for uh, our main character Karuna um, to follow uh, she still ends up getting pregnant um, and then sort of the the pressure from her mother really ramps up and her level of control ramps up as well. Um, and so it's sort of, uh, so this is told from the perspective of Karuna and she's writing to her unbo unborn child and she's talking about her experience of being pregnant um, and also just of, um, you know, her relationship with her mother essentially. Um, so I found this story hard to connect with, partly I think because it's written in the second person, which to me, it, you know, because it's being written to the unborn baby. So to me, it kind of was like it disconnected um, because I'm not an unborn baby. So I just didn't quite connect with the way the story was told. And also um, maybe because she's a 16 year old, that's possibly another aspect of, of why I didn't connect so well with this story. Again, it was fine. Um, I didn't cry, <laughs> um, even though there were some, you know, quite um, sad things that happened to Karuna in this book. I didn't cry. And I think um, that probably is the indicator that it wasn't, it didn't connect with me in the way that I think it was intended. I think other people will probably really enjoy this book, but it it was not for me. Um, however, I did give it 3.75 stars. So this was my second least favourite um, of the of the five shortlisted books. Um, but I think for a different reader, this could really connect and be um, an enjoyable story. It's well written. It just was not in a style that kind of suited me. Um, so that's that one. 
And then we get on to the last three. Um, and these are actually the three that I read most recently. Um, I've read all three of these in the month of July, uh, which we are still in. So I actually haven't yet um, posted about my thoughts on these three books. Uh, so my next, um, the next book for me, the one that's sort of right in the middle, is uh, called this. What's it called? The other half of you, um, by Michael Muhammad Ahmad, um, and this is uh, a book that I have borrowed from the library. So I don't own this book, but I still have it. I haven't returned it yet. Um, so this book is told from this perspective of a man called Barney. And Bunny is um, a, a Lebanese Australian. So he was born in Australia, but his parents were migrants. It's a bit of a theme so far, isn't there? Um, of, you know, migrant parents and that sort of uh, the experience of being um, from a different background other than the, the more dominant one in a society. In this story, Barney is a, um, so as I said, a Lebanese Australian and he is uh, somebody who is kind of at a crossroads. So he has gone to university. He's, um, you know, in the process of getting his qualifications um, in English literature. And he is, uh, so he's far more educated than his migrant parents. His father didn't complete, uh, you know, even the equivalent of, of what we would call primary school where I live, um, or sort of like, uh, elementary school, I think it's called in America. Um, so, you know, he, he has a very low education in that sense. Um, but he's also a successful business owner, um, owns a lot of, you know, owns multiple houses or purchased, has purchased multiple houses and things like that. So he's a successful man, but not very educated. And it's sort of this like crossroads between, um, you know, the sort of values of the previous generation and the values of, um, you know, the younger generation. And, and uh, Barney is quite uh, keen to to respect his elders and to, to follow his culture. So he comes from um, a Lebanese Muslim background um, and he wants to follow uh, the what his family and culture and community are expecting of him but in the in regards to love and um relationships he keeps fall he's fallen for a woman who is Lebanese but of Christian descent and that's not acceptable to his family so that's where we sort of begin the story um actually that's not entirely true because we begin the story with him talking to his son um, so this sort of jumps between that sort of second person talking to his son. And, and actually the, the parts where he's talking to his son are really quite beautiful, um, very poetic sort of language. And then him telling the story of essentially how he came to have his son. Um, so, yeah, we start th the beginning of that story is not with the mother of this son, but with this sort of first love um, that he has uh, with this Lebanese Christian um, girl because he's a teenager at the time. Um, so it sort of starts there and kind of builds from there. And this was quite, um, you know, sort of dealing with that tension between what you, what you as an individual want and what your community wants for you and your, uh, especially in a, when you're in a, in a land that is not the land of that culture that you're not the dominant culture. Um, so it's really hard to kind of, walk that tightrope between other people's expectations and following your own um, heart. So in that sense, this was a, I really enjoyed this book. Um, I ended up giving it four stars. And the reason I didn't give it a higher rating is because there were some aspects of the book that I found quite hard to read. So there were a lot of racist epithets in this book, contextual, um, but not, but still not easy to read. Uh, I personally didn't like that. And I felt like some of those things were possibly not necessary. Um, that's me. I'm not the author, but, you know, I personally wouldn't have included them in this book if I were writing it. It's not my story either, but not, it wasn't for me. Um, and also 
there was one aspect of how I don't want to give a, a plot spoiler away. Um, there was a character whose resolution I did not appreciate. I didn't like um, how things resolved for this character. Um, and, you know, as as their story kind of interwove with Barney's story. Um, and I, I didn't. I didn't appreciate how that sort of played out. I'm trying not to give anything away because I don't want to spoil it for someone who wants to read it. Otherwise, this was a really good book and I really did enjoy the story. It was a very compelling story. Every time I picked it up, I wanted to keep reading. It was really um, a really interesting story. So, yeah, I would highly recommend this book if you can put up with those things two things <laughs> that I was just talking about. Um, so that's the reason I didn't give this a higher rating, but it was a really good book and I would encourage people to pick it up if they can find it. Um, the next one for me um, was probably the most, uh, I would say, unusual of, of this set of books because um, it is what I would call like an experimental literary style. So the book is called Grimish um, by Michael Winkler. I gave this book four and a half stars and I, at the time when I had read it, it was the best of the bunch. Um, and then I read the one that I liked the better. <laughs> um, so only slightly better, but I did like it better. Uh, so this is a, a book about boxing. Now you would think that I'm not the kind of person who's into boxing and I'm not. Um, however, this is actually the second book about where, where, uh, it's about boxing. The first one I read was a, a sort of like a um, a biography of a boxer and I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed this book too that's about a boxer. He was a real person called Joe Grimm. Um, he was from Italy and back in the day, and I can't rem I haven't written down in my notes when this book was set, but I'm going to say the early part of the of the 20th century um he traveled he had been boxing around the world so he'd been to america and you know boxed some really you know big names at the time champion boxers um and then came to australia and was boxing here as well um so the thing about him is that he was actually not a great boxer as in 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 the sense of being um you know, he wasn't an like aggressive or, you know, proactive kind of boxer. He just was able to cope with a lot of pain. So his, um, his thing was like endurance and being able to hold out and, um, go the full amount of rounds without getting knocked out. That was kind of his, his thing. So, um, you know, he was able to box with these like big stars of the time because, you know, people wanted a show that would, would go on. Um, so, you know, they were, you know, it was sort of like watching this guy coping with crazy amounts of pain, um, you know, bleeding and, and, you know, bruised and, and beaten, um, and just getting back up again and, and continuing on. So that's sort of the story of Grimm, which kind of like goes through, um, that, that flows through this book. Um, however, there's also this other element, which is the writer talking to, um, his, he calls it his not uncle. So it's a guy that he calls uncle, but isn't actually his uncle. And the uncle is, was part of this story of Grimm. He was sort of, a a guy who, um, was part of, ended up becoming part of Grimm's team. And he's recounting his experience with Grimm. So this is kind of like the fictionalized aspect of it um, is this guy's recollections of Grimm. So he's kind of taken aspects of that were true and then turned them into fiction um, by the way that it's told. There's also some what I would call like almost um like mystical elements to the story like there's a talking goat at one point it, like it's weird it's a weird weird book but I did quite like it and I feel like um one of the things that I liked the best about it was the banter between um you know the the writer and his not uncle 
um, which is very uh, witty and um, in, a, in a very Australian way, which I really appreciated. I don't think this book is for everyone, but it is very well researched um, and it's definitely very unique uh, and it doesn't come across as gimmicky. Um, like I was talking about scary monsters, I felt like the fact that you flip the book and you've got two stories one side felt more like a gimmick, whereas the kind of weird elements of this book didn't feel gimmicky. They just kind of felt unique. And you could tell there were a lot of footnotes as well. So you could tell that there a lot of research had gone into um, into this book as well. It's odd, but in the best possible way is what I'm trying to say. I guess probably why I gave it 4.5 rather than 5, I felt like it's not a book that everyone would appreciate um, in that same way, just because it is so weird. Like if you look at the reviews on um, the Storygraph or Goodreads or wherever you get your reviews, um, you will see there will be like one star reviews because I feel like people are like, this is weird. It's too weird. It's too weird for me. <laughs> um, you know, they're thinking they're about to read a boxing book and then they get a talking goat. So it's just kind of, it's weird. It's definitely weird, but really, really good. And I would encourage people to pick it up if they can find it. It's really hard to find. It was actually independently published to begin with. And then a small publisher picked it up, which is the first time an independently published book has made it into even the long list of, um, of this prize. So that's really exciting um, to have that variety in the, uh, in this kind of upper echelon of, um, of Australian writing. Okay, let's get to what was for me the winner and turned out to be the actual winner. Um, and that is Bodies of Light by Jennifer Down. Now I did not read this copy. I listened to it on audiobook and then as soon as I finish it, I'm like, I need a copy of this book because I'm definitely going to read this again at some point. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and you must, must, must read this book <laughs> if you can. Uh, so this is a book um, that is told from the perspective of somebody who um, grew up in a, in foster care and in sort of institutions. Um, and it's her story. Um, of the things that happened to her in that during that time, but it's mainly the story of how she came to um, disappear. So she uh, ended up disappearing from her life uh, for various reasons, which I won't go into because I don't want to spoil it for you. It's a really, really great book and you really should read it. Um, so she disappears from her life. And at the beginning of the book, someone from her her background has found her. Someone has um, seen a Facebook picture um, that kind of went viral and that she was in because she works as a nurse um, and they, somebody, you know, it, they came across this photo and they were like, I'm pretty sure that's her. Um, even though that's not how she was tagged because she changed her name and so on. Um, so yeah, someone's found found her from her previous life. So it's her kind of um, we're talking about like the decision of whether or not to kind of get in touch with this person or to like just delete and and step back and pretend, like delete everything and, and escape um, or to, to get into contact with this person. My cat is sneezing in the background, I hope that that is not distracting anybody else other than me. <laughs> okay, um, so that's the main thing. And then you kind of get that her then telling part, the parts of her story. So you, it sort of is a, a slow reveal of what's going on um, in her life. Trigger warnings for sure for all of the things that you would imagine happen in the foster care system, um, you know, in the past uh, and in institutions. Th those things happen to to this woman. She hasn't had an easy life, um, but she does end up, you know, uh, in pursuing things and and achieving things. And I left the end of this book overall like just like I cried for a lot of it, and then I also um, 
just for some of the really awful things that happened to her. But then also, you know, it felt hopeful to me at the end of the book. So even though there's all of this kind of like hardship and so on, there was still hope um, for this character. Um, so, yeah, you must, must. And like I've written in my notes here, oh, my heart. <laughs> um, I was so drawn into the tragedy of Maggie's story the horrors of her early life, her awful experiences in institutions and foster care. Um, she loses babies um, and her life in hiding. Like, you know, what a what an awful thing to go through. However, the writing is just so, um, so tenderly done and just beautifully written. Um, her inner life is so rich and I feel like characters like this can often be relegated to um you know being rather two-dimensional but she's full of life and you get to you know hear her inner thoughts all the time um and you know it just really brings her to life as a person and I think um the author really writes this character with such dignity and and gentleness um it's too it was just so good give it all the stars give it all the awards it's amazing um so it yeah i'm so pleased that this ended up being the winning book because it is was absolutely the highlight for me um such a heart-wrenching book but just so beautifully written um and definitely a worthy winner of um the 2022 Miles Franklin Award here in Australia. So if you can get your hands on this, please do. Um, I really, really encourage people to get, get into it because it's just amazing. All right, well, that's it from me today. Um, I have very much enjoyed making this video and I've very much enjoyed this project um, that I have been working on, reading these books, uh, plus the two that I don't have physical copies of. Um, I'm going to keep reading the long list, the rest of the long list. I've read one other book from the long list um, and then I've, so I've got five more to go. Uh, so I'm really, really pleased to be working on this project and I hope that I can get to the end of it by the end of this year. That is my, my plan. Uh, so thanks for watching guys and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.